I'm Judy Shaw for NYSE Floor Talk, and I'm here at NYSE Pacific. Joining me today is Alex Ratner. He is co-founder and CEO at Snorkel AI. Alex, it's wonderful to have you here. Thanks for joining me. Thanks so much for having me. I'm my excited. pleasure, my pleasure. I'm excited to talk with you and to talk about Snorkel AI. So let's start off about talking about the company. Tell me about Snorkel AI. Yeah, so at a high level, we help enterprises uh, basically get AI to work on their data uh, for their specific use cases. And uh, what people are learning in the markets these days, as we kind of go through our hype cycle that we're all uh, uh, you know, roller, co roller coasting on right now, is um, you know, it's not generally going to work out of the box when you take AI and you say, I'm going to go plug ChatGPT into a critical business process and, and just you know, be off and running, fire my data science team. It usually means um, that there's a lot of work left to do, and it really comes down to using your data in your enterprise and tuning, it, tuning that model for your objectives. And we, provide a platform for doing that in a, a, a programmatic and efficient way. And we've been working on this for about nine and a half years, uh, starting at the Stanford AI Lab. Um, and then uh, we spun out a couple of years ago and uh, tried to take it to actual, uh, actual businesses. Okay, so now tell me, how are you different from others that are in this space? It's a great question. So a lot of the focus in AI today, first and foremost, is on the, the models. These are the, you know, the, this is, these are the, the large language models or, or Gen AI models like ChatGPT that we're, uh, um, we're all so enamored by. And, and they're you know, miracles of modern engineering, right? Hun tens, hundreds of millions of dollars go and train these things. Um, but a lot of the technology that is actually used, the models, the algorithms, is getting pretty standardized across uh, the space. And so a lot of the tech has gone into building those models. Um, but a lot of what actually informs whether they're going to work you know, at 50%, 90%, 100% accuracy on your use case in your specific enterprise is, is all the data that you feed into them to teach them. Um, think about these models like uh, really smart college students, and you need a, a specialist, a, a doctor, a lawyer, a, an underwriter. Um, the way you get there is by teaching these models with data, and that data needs to be labeled and curated, and that's what we focus on. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of distinction number one. Lots of focus on building the models, uh, less focus on building the data that they learn from that tunes them for specific enterprises. And then within that data space, data-centric AI we often call it, uh, we're unique in uh, the technology we use to automate and accelerate this process, which we've worked on for the last almost a decade at this point. Mm -hmm. All right, so now as you look to the next 12 months, tell me, what are you most focused on? What are your priorities? Well, it all, all starts, this is gonna sound quite cheesy, but intentionally so, all starts from listening to our customers. So we work with some, some great customers uh, uh, we're working with uh, seven of the top 10 U.S. banks, uh, government agencies, healthcare systems like Memorial Sloan Kettering, um, and many others, and they all have very unique data types. They all have very unique objectives and use case types. And so a lot of our roadmap is determined by, you know, really in, in partnership with those customers, trying to understand, you know, in these different verticals, what, uh, what are the problems, what are the types of use cases where AI is actually providing value? And that, first of all, is one of the areas where I spend a lot of my time we're in you know, a cloud of, 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 of you know, fervor right now over applying AI to everything. And a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of us are, you know, a lot of our customers are trying to figure out where, where does this actually land? What, what stands after the dust settles? So a lot of our roadmap is really about kind of the use case specific stuff that we build and working with our customers who are usually at the vanguard in their vertical to determine those use cases. The other really exciting kind of angle to this is um, as enterprises do deeper and deeper customization of their models. So a lot of folks right now are kind of taking off the shelf models and they're using our platforms to kind of tune them, what's called fine tuning or instruction tuning, to kind of tune them for the last mile of their specific use cases. But what the space is realizing is that a lot of the, um, the models, the, 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 um, the core techniques are kind of getting standardized and the value is really in enterprise's own data. So as they realize this, they're trying to build their own models increasingly that really leverage that data that can power all of their use cases rather than having to rely on the off-the-shelf software. And we're very excited over the next year or two to be helping them with, with that, that bigger vision. It's not just the, you know, taking something off the shelf and tuning it, but really building their own AI models as core organizational assets, leveraging their unique data and knowledge. All right, one final question for you. You're co-founder of the company. Tell me, what sparked you to start this company? Oh, uh, I think I got the boot from academia. So, so we were, uh, um, the, the whole team spun out of Stanford and we were there for like about four and a half, five years. And we were pretty, you know, stubborn and staying there. Bunch of rounds of turning down venture funding and we were, you know, heads down working. We had some awesome people we got to work with. We worked everyone from, you know, pediatric genomicists to, you know, 
uh, folks from the, the, the federal side, DOD, to um, lots of companies, uh, big tech companies, et cetera. So we were having a great time innovating there. And eventually our, our users, we had a lot of open source code, started uh, coming up to us and basically saying, look, like, enough with the research papers. We need product around this. We need a UI. We need the back end. We need support. So after our users were kind of giving us the nudge, we said, OK, it's time to productize this. And that was when we you know, went to Sand Hill and got some capital. And, <clears throat> and now we're, uh, now we're um, you know, out, out in the, the world as a company. All right. Well, Alex, wonderful to talk with you. Thanks for joining me on Floor Talk today. Thank you so much for having me.